Hello everyone, welcome to Christchurch, New Southgate and Fine Barnet to our service today on the 21st of June 2020. Today we're going to celebrate communion, so please would you make sure that you have something to eat and something to drink and we will share together later on in the service. It doesn't matter what it is, whatever you've got to hand is fine. We begin our service today with some sad news. I'm deeply sorry to share that Joyce Percy has died after a period of poor health and a heart condition. She passed away on Monday. At um, nearly 88, Joyce was well loved among our congregation and fondly remembered for her service to various organisations in the church like Women's Club or lending a hand or baking a cake for whatever event it was that we had planned. Her faith was quiet yet steadfast in the God who is faithful to us all. So let's pray for her family together. Let's join together in prayer. Lord, we're sorry that Joyce has died. Her light and life meant so much to all of us. We thank you that she knew you and loved you and yearned to be with you. Lord, we pray that you would sustain her family, her children and her close friends at this time. Lord, as we prepare to um, take part in her funeral soon, and as we mourn and grieve in different ways now. Lord, we pray that you would breathe through this situation, that you would help us who are grieving, and that you would bring calm to our souls. Sustain each of us, Lord, in grief. Assure us of your presence in pain, and remind us of your healing balm offer to us all in times of sorrow. Amen. Our reading today is given by Sarah. Thank you so much for reading for us today. Keeping on imitating my brothers, pay attention to those who follow the right example that we have set for you. I have told you this many times before and now I repeat it with tears. There are many whose lives make enemies of Christ's death on the cross. They are going to end up in hell because their God is bodily desires. They are proud of what they have should be ashamed of and they think only of things that belong to this world. We, however, are citizens of heaven. And we eagerly await our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come from heaven. He will change our weak, immoral bodies and make them like his own glorious body, using that power by which he is able to bring all things under his rule. God bless the name of the Lord. As citizens of heaven, we join with the angels who sing uh, many hymns of faith along with us. We're going to sing today, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. Thank you, John, for playing and preparing this song.
today is Father's Day and perhaps if you're nearby to your dad you might wave and say Happy Father's Day or if you are not nearby or perhaps you've never been close would you perhaps think of a man who has been special to you, someone who has cared for you, encouraged you and cheered you on your way and I encourage you now to think about making a call to them or writing to them to bless them and encourage them. We're going to pray for fathers now. Please join me. Creating and sustaining God, we thank you for nurturing us like a mother. We praise you that your care and protection surround us like a father. On this Father's Day, we remember all the people who have nurtured us, especially in the important men in our lives. We say together, we pray for fathers in our church. May you encourage, equip and bless them today and always. Amen. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer together. Let's um, pray using actions. Are you ready? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let's pray before we open up God's word together. Most gracious and beautiful Lord, we pray that you would breathe through your, your scriptures today. We pray that you would Help us to understand what it is you want to say to us and that you might uh, challenge us and shape us afresh. Lord, we long for your transformation as individuals and as a church. And so, Lord, we are open to you and we ask that you speak to us uh, through the words I've prepared this morning. Amen. On Monday, Penny and I ventured into the church to record the prayers for this week. You'll see Penny a little bit later on. As we walked in carefully to the church, touching as little as possible, don't worry, and keeping a distance from each other, we realised that we were not alone in the church. As we opened the inner door to the sanctuary, to the main worship area of the church, we realised that we were walking through small cobwebs across the doors. We brushed them off our clothes. Now, I know some of you might be freaking out right now. Some of us like spiders and some of us don't mind spiders, but a lot of people I know do not like them. But what we found inside was an incredible sight. And I'll put a picture up for you just now. The entire top of the front pew has an enormous cobweb stretching from one end to the very other. Since lockdown, the church has been closed, the building that is, not us, we're fully alive online, and it won't reopen fully um, for a while yet. As the church building has ceased to be used for its original purpose, the spiders have taken over. See, our building is normally, obviously, cleaned every week. And it usually has lots of people in it, singing, listening, worshipping, praying. And those pews have kids clambering over them and offering adults a place to sit and rest. In Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, he writes to Christians who are in the church. He writes to those who are attending church and know the name of Jesus well and all of his teaching well. These people know here in their heads that God loves them, 
that he died for them and that Christians need to follow in Christ's way. And yet in verse 18, we find that Paul is weeping, that he is imploring his people in tears to listen to him. I have told you many times, he says, and now I repeat it with tears. There are those whose lives make them enemies of the cross. At the heart of the church in Philippi, there were some people who called themselves Christians, but their lives were not cross-shaped. What does it mean to have a cross-shaped life as a Christian, to be cruciform in life? In short, it means to be like Christ, who took on the nature of a servant, who was humble and walked the path of obedience all the way to death on a cross. Penny and I marvelled at that mega cobweb. It really was a feat of nature. But she also suggested to me that it serves as a prophetic image for us all too. You know, we've always known that there have been spiders in our church. We know that because quite often they set off the alarm by running across the sensors. But lockdown has revealed their true presence and power. I wonder what else has lockdown revealed to us as we commute less, as we shop less, as we visit less. What have we noticed? What have we seen, perhaps, that's been staring us right in the face for a long time? What have we known that has always been there, but is now unavoidably present? As we witness the death of George Floyd and now Rayshard Brooks in the USA, our gaze cannot be so easily averted from the racism that exists in our world. As I continue to reflect on racism, colonialism and white privilege, I ask the same question now of myself. Where have I ignored racism within my life, my ministry, in our church and in our world? What about each of us? What have we ignored in our lives? And that now, through just a little bit more time, we can no longer avoid. Maybe our relationships need work. Maybe our eating habits need sorting out. Maybe we've realised just how much we snack. But maybe our spiritual life also needs tending. What might God be challenging us today about? What might his spirit be prompting us uh, in our souls now? Can I encourage you to listen carefully to that nudge of God? Perhaps a slightly twisty, turny stomach, that feeling where you know something's not quite right and God is just pushing us to consider uh, what it might be. Would we listen attentively to God's prompting today and hold on to it and allow God to speak to us? One day, and I don't know when, I'm really sorry, but one day we will be worshipping again together at Christ Church. The building will be transformed. I assure you there will be no more cobwebs and it will be full of delighted people instead who will be singing to the glory of God. While we wait eagerly for that day to come, we know that Christ Jesus is in the business of transformation. For he takes the lowly, and lifts them up. He turns water into wine. He turns God-haters into saints. God formed each of our bodies now, and God made each of us, and he will make us again into our glorious bodies, which will be fit for heaven. You see, his work of transformation is not restricted to heaven either, for God's power can change anything and any person. His power can melt the coldest heart and rebuild the broken. God's power is immense because it is based in love. The greatest of all loves, the love that he has for his children. 
So might we hear this challenge of scripture today. May we be open to change. May we be ready to follow Christ afresh. May we have lives that look like his. You know, the power of God is this. He can blow away every cobweb in our lives, in our church and in our world. The love of God is this. He wants to transform us. The grace of God is this. He is always waiting for us to say yes to his transforming power in our lives. Is there something you need to trust God to transform in your life today? Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world and he calls each of us and especially those in the church to follow him in lives that are dedicated, that are cross-shaped to love, mercy and justice for all. Justice for the oppressed and justice for those who need it the most. May the Spirit enable us to bravely face those cobwebs of our lives and our shared life so that we might shine for God's glory as we delight in our citizenship of heaven. Amen. We're going to share in communion together, so if you have your bread or cracker, whatever it is, and your drink nearby, please uh, bring them towards you. And we'll say these words together if you would join in the words in bold. Gather us, Lord, the lost and the lonely, the broken and the breaking, the tired and the aching, who long for the nourishment found at your feast. Gather us, Lord. The done and the doubting, the wishing and the wondering, the puzzled and the pondering, who long for the company found at your feast. Gather us, Lord. From corner or limelight, from mansion or campsite, from fears and obsession, from tears and depression, from untold excesses, from treasured successes, to meet, to eat, to be given a seat, to be joined to the vine, to be offered new wine, become like the least and be found at the feast. Gather us, Lord. The tables we have before us are not of the church, but of the Lord, who is present wherever each of us are. The table that we have, whatever it looks like, is made ready for those who love him and want to love him more. So we share in this meal today, if you have much faith or if you have little, if you've had this meal many times or you've not had it in a very long while, if you've tried to follow Christ and if you fail to follow him too. Share this meal with us now, not because I'm inviting you, but because the Lord is. It is his will that those who seek him should meet in this way today. Let's hear the story of communion. On the night on which Jesus was betrayed, he sat at supper with his disciples. While they were eating, he took a piece of bread and said a blessing. He broke it and gave it to them with the words, This is my body, it is for you. Do this to remember me. Later he took a cup of wine, saying, This cup is God's new covenant, sealed with my blood. Drink from it, all of you, to remember me. So now, following Jesus' example and command, we take this bread and wine, the ordinary things of this world, which Christ makes special. And so we pray together just as Jesus did. Thank you, God, for this time. Thank you for this space to be able to pause in this difficult time, Lord. 
Thank you that when we were nothing, you made us something. When we had no name and no faith and no future, you call us your children. Thank you that when we lost our way or turned away, you did not abandon us. But when we came back to you, your arms opened wide in welcome. And see, you have made a table for us, offering not just bread, not just wine, but your very self, that we might be filled forgiven, healed, blessed and transformed, made new again. You are worth all our pain and all our praise. So we join our voices to those of the church on earth and in heaven, saying these words together, please. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so we pray together. Lord, as we come together over the internet and many other ways to share in the richness of your table, we cannot forget the rawness of your earth. We cannot take bread and forget those who are hungry. We cannot take wine and forget those who are thirsty. We cannot hear your words of peace and forget the world at war. We cannot celebrate the feast of your family and forget our divisions. So we say these words together. We are one in spirit, but not in fact. History and hurt still dismember us. Lord, heal our church and land in every brokenness. Amen. Among friends gathered round a table, Jesus took bread and he broke it, saying, This is my body, which is for you. And later he took a cup of wine and said, This is is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Take this, all of you, to remember me. In this drink and in this bread, here is Christ with all of us. May we feast on him. Let's take bread together. and take a sip of your drink. We'll share the peace together. When I say the peace of the Lord be with you, please would you reply and also with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We'll pray together, please would you say the words in bold. From where we are to where you need us, Jesus, now lead on. From the security of what we know to the adventure of what you will reveal, Jesus, now lead on. To refashion the fabric of the world until it resembles the shape of your kingdom, Jesus, now lead on because good things have been prepared for those who love God. Jesus, now lead on. Penny will now lead us in intercessions. Thank you, Penny. Let us pray for the church, the world, and thank God for his goodness. The response will be when I say, Lord, hear our prayer. And your response is, and let our cry for help reach you. O oh God, we pray for your church throughout the world. May she continue to be a beacon of light in this world of darkness, especially during this time of trial. Thank you for the technology that has enabled us to continue with, with worship and fellowship, bringing church into our homes during lockdown. 
We thank you and we pray for our church and our minister Ruth and her dedicated team for their effort, devotion, for making this possible during lockdown. Please direct and guide those making decisions to open the church for a few days for prayer. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry for help reach you. O oh, eternal God, we thank you and we pray for all those who teach your love by word and by the way they live their lives in Christ. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry for help reach you. Creator God, we pray for our troubled world and your world. We remember those still locked in conflict and we pray for the overcoming of fears, mistrust, and hatred that sustain it. We pray for peace, cooperation, harmony, mutual respect in all our dealings with one another, locally, nationally, and internationally. Cleanse our hearts and kindle them within a flame of love and compassion for all peoples, regardless of who they are, and accept them just as they are, as God who created us in his own image. Accept them, accept us just as we are. Please, Father, help us to cooperate with you in stamping out racism in our societies. For two are better than one, and especially if one of them is you, O oh God. We pray for calm and understanding as the wave of protests grip the world, especially in London, after the death of George Lloyd in the hands of the police in the US. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry for help reach you. Dear Father, please protect us against this virus by the power of your grace. We pray for all countries easing out of lockdown. Guide them as they face a new life and uncertain future after the pandemic. We especially pray for the UK, our Prime Minister, and the government as they battle through the destruction of the nation's health and economy. Guide them for with, all, with you, all things are possible. And you are still in control. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry for help reach you. Father, bring hope and healing to all those who are still ill. We commend to your mercy and love those who have died. Comfort those who mourn them and strengthen their faith in you. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry for help reach you. Please, Lord, give us give shelter to the young people still arriving in here, looking for a better life. Let your will be done. It is Father's Day. We thank you for the blessings of fathers, present and departed. We celebrate this day with you, our heaven Father, and glorify you are holy name. Let's say together, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you would like to join in a children's song, it's one just below called I'm Going to Trust in God. It's a great song. Please do join in that after this video. And so let's say that final uh, verse of Philippians that we might encourage each other in uh, being citizens of heaven. We are citizens of heaven and we eagerly await for our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come from heaven. May each of us know God's power of transformation in this week, in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>